We are delighted to be exhibiting Renee Austin's work at the Napa County Main Library during the month of July, 2021. Renee Austin has always been a storyteller. As a professional storyteller, a photographer, a children's librarian, and now a painter, she has told stories about individuals, places, events, and other cultures. She has a BA in art and a master's in library science. She has spent the last three years creating Crisis Mother Earth, 27 oil paintings about some of the world's most serious problems. It's my pleasure to introduce Renee Austin. I'd like to thank Stefana for all her work in getting me this far. And I'd like to thank the library for accepting my work to be shown. When I started painting, I thought I would paint beautiful flowers or landscapes that I'd learned to paint abstracts, but three things changed my mind. The constant news about the world's many problems, the evidence that I've seen traveling the world over the last 15 years, and a love for my four grandchildren and a concern over their future. By creating and exhibiting this series, I'm using my voice to encourage others to join the fight to save the planet. As we look at these photos of each of the paintings, I'm going to tell you what inspired each one and why I paint the way I do. And let's begin. In the beginning, this was the first painting on the subject. It started out as an abstract, but the more I looked at it, the more it looked like a small town that was being flooded. So I added to the buildings, I added to the flood, and I added to the tall fence in the background, which reminded me of a wall to keep the unwanted out. Sweltering. A hot, dry safari in Tanzania inspired this painting. It was really shocking and sad to see how dry the country had become. I saw a very wide, dry riverbed and was told that 20 years earlier, it had been a raging river. People had to walk miles with jugs on their head to collect muddy river water to take home to their families. Therefore, this is called sweltering. Managing alone. This is Cuba. Cuba has been managing alone since the fall of the Soviet Union when they lost their trading partner and their financial support. It's still managing alone due to lack of trade with the United States and lack of American tourists. Therefore, Cuba's painting was titled Managing Alone. A 10 day trip to, Cu to Cuba, we found people warm and friendly. Their performance and visual arts are incredible. I don't understand why I could go to Russia a few years ago and plan a trip to China last year, but not go to Cuba, a country that has never threatened us. The monsters we made. Monsters, why do I put monsters into my paintings? Well, I love fantasy and science fiction. I read a lot as a kid and as a children's librarian. So to catch the viewer's eye, I use brightly co colored monsters to comment on how monstrous our man-made problems have become. Do you see the Statue of Liberty in the lower right? That's my comment, that the problems are ours too not just the rest of the world's. Turning up the heat, Abu Dhabi's desalination. I've made two trips to, to Abu Dhabi and Dubai. What an amazing place, a wealthy oil nation where everything is new, but the country is a dry scorching desert. They have an unlimited amount of water cheap water because the government pays to have it desalinated from the sea and they sell it cheaply to residents. They have so much water, in fact, that I saw huge parks 
with acres and acres of petunias and grass painted directly in sand, and they just keep watering it. They plant palm trees along the desert highway, deep in the desert. I saw a water truck with the driver out, hand watering each palm tree with a hose. Do they realize that desalination adds to global warming? I don't know. Desperate. Wow. Singapore is already an incredible, clean, hospitable, green city, garden city. They started planning it years ago, but they have one huge problem. It's a low lying island. So as glaciers melt, Singapore is at risk of being swamped by rising sea levels. So I think they must be desperately looking for a solution. The Black Death, 21st century epidemic, Delhi. Seeing the black polluted skies in Delhi was an eye opener for me. That memory played an important part in my decision to create this series. My doctor had already advised me to buy a charcoal filtered mask so that I could breathe when I got to Delhi, but I hadn't realized how bad the pollution had already become or how many people were already dying. Other cities are having similar problems. Napa Valley's sky turned red one day and then gray for weeks during recent wildfires. The air quality index was as bad in some areas as it had been in Delhi when I was there in 2015. Many of us wore masks. The stores all sold out. Because people are dying, I named this painting The Black Death, the 21st century epidemic. If we can't control it, it could become a pandemic. Have you noticed that my color palette is similar in a lot of my paintings? I love bright colors, reds, oranges, and blues. So I often use them. I use these bright, cheerful colors in order to attract attention and bring hope to a depressing subject. I'm an optimist. I believe that we can save the planet, but that we need everyone to pitch in and join the fight. Abandon. I think this painting speaks for itself. We will be abandoning the planet and all of its living things if we do not curtail global warming. Experts say that species are going extinct faster than ever before. The estimate is that it is happening between 1,000 and 10,000 times faster than the natural extinction rate. Adapt or die. That seems to be the choice of many plants and animals. Here I've highlighted the plight of the polar bears. Most of the fish in the painting have died, only a few are still alive. I've also hinted at man's food crisis by painting an empty fishing boat. Water's end. Some areas are already seeing rivers that are ending. Water, I think, is our most valuable commodity. Little can live without it. But Western states and many other areas are losing it. California is in a big mega drought right now, eclipsed only, I'm told, by a drought in 1500. The water level at the Hoover Dam is lower than ever. It's down 143 feet since it was last full in 2000. With water rationing, the hardest hit in the beginning will be the farmers. But as water shortages and rationing continue, we may all suffer food shortages. Instead of oil wars, in the future, we may have water wars. 
or food wars. Generation Breathless. This was painted after the fires in October 2017, when my house nearly burned down twice in Napa in the same week. Luckily, both times the wind changed. Since future generations may be facing more wildfires and unbreathable air, I had to title this painting, Generation Breathless. Famonization, a word that I think I made up. Animals cannot live and crops cannot grow without water. Without a solution, the result will be famine. This painting is not as bright as many of my paintings because I wanted to use browns to represent the dried crop, cracked soil, but I added a lot of red, red to it to make it a little bit brighter and more cheerful. Unleashed. Much of our weather is already frightening. Hurricanes, cyclones, tornadoes, earthquakes. Scientists, though, are expecting more extreme weather as temperatures rise. We're already seeing some evidence of it in the heat, the extreme heat that we've had this week on the West Coast. I have unleashed the monsters in this painting because it is a monstrous problem that needs to be solved. When a friend becomes an enemy, plastic, all the little colored dots you see in the background are representing plastic that has been thrown away and piled up. Wow, we thought plastic was great when it came out. Many people might think so still. It's cheap and has so many uses, but little did we know that disposing of it would become a nightmare. Plastic is not only filling our landfills, but also our rivers, lakes, and oceans. It's being shipped to third world countries for people to sort. But only five to 10% is good enough quality to be recycled. See all the smoke in my painting? Plastic is being burned, but that only increases pollution. The forever war, plastic. We're facing a huge plastic disposal problem. It's not biodegradable. It never dissolves or disappears. It may be around forever. It simply breaks down into smaller and smaller bits that eventually end up in the air that we breathe. People are working on it, but there's no easy answer. What are we doing? Outlawing single use plastic bags. What a good idea, but what are the stores doing? Some are offering thicker plastic bags and they tell us to reuse them. Big help? No. So many casualties. We find 100,000 marine animals each year that have died from getting entangled in plastic. The air isn't safe either. More than 90% of all seabirds are found to have plastic pieces in their stomachs. Scientists estimate that 100 million marine animals die each year from plastic waste. California, under fire. The past two seasons in California have been terrifying. This year, California is drier than ever before, so the fire season will be longer. I've dedicated this painting to the California I love and hate to see burn. Engulfed. Painting can be very therapeutic, but painting California under fire was not enough for me. I had to paint one more scene, a screaming harsh scene to express the way I felt during the fires. See the eyes? 
I have engulfed a person or animal in the flames, have used harsh colors to try and express the raw intensity of the experience. This painting is dedicated to those firemen who were caught in the wildfire and had to hide under an emergency cover while the fire passed over them. I cannot even imagine a more terrifying experience. I have two types of heroes now, medical workers who cared for us during COVID and firefighters who are working to save us in our homeland. When pandemics, the idea of AIs, artificial intelligence or robots that we used to call them scares me. Yes, they're simple now, but what about in the future when they realize that they are smarter, stronger and live longer than we do? Professor Stephen Hawking, one of Britain's preeminent scientists told the BBC, the development of artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. I am so concerned that I compared it with COVID-19 and named this painting, Twin Pandemics. Nuclear Nightmare. We've lived with the threat of nuclear war for many decades. It never seems to go away. Let's hope that no one is ever crazy enough to start a nuclear war. Welcome to America. Prejudice breeds hatred and injustice. I think the title says it all. How can this problem go on for so long? Children aren't born hating. They're taught to hate. Black lives matter, yes. All lives matter. Let us stand with and help those who are being bullied or beaten down. Unwelcome. 82 million people had been displaced by 2020 forcibly displaced by conflict, violence, persecution, and climate. A desperate situation that I thought was worthy of a painting. I turned the tables though, when I added the American flag to the top right land. You may have to come in the library and see my painting in order to see it, it's so small. My question is, who will take us? if we are not humane to others now. I love to paint fantasy, as you see. First, I thought of adding the fence so no one could come in. I painted my city, and then I thought, well, we should have eyeballs staring at these people that dare to try and come into another country. Um, so I really enjoyed painting this one. All is not rosy. I thought I would paint, I thought I was getting tired of painting sad problems. I wanted to paint a nice vase of flowers and I did, but then it seemed boring to me and I decided to add my snakes and add a comment. It's easy to go about our lives without doing anything about the world's problems, but the world is changing in a dangerous way. There are many things that we can do. Use less plastic. Don't buy bottles of water. Refill a plastic water bottle. Use less power. At my house, we're using fans now instead of our air conditioner. Use less water. Combine your trips in your car so that you drive less. Or maybe ride a bike to the store, which is what my husband is always saying. Eat less meat, for it takes a lot of resources to raise an animal. There are lots of action groups to join, too. Check them out on the web. I'm looking into Napa climate now. So all is not rosy. Ch 
shame on us if we let the monsters win. We took a couple of days and went to the coast and I saw a wonderful bay and I thought I'd come home and, and paint a bay picture. But I started thinking about problems again. And so I painted this land of where the monsters took over because we didn't solve the problems. I want to do something now. In 20 or 30 years, when it's too late to solve the climate crisis, I wouldn't want to look back and wish I had done something. I want to do it now. I'm using my voice as an artist and a voter. I've spent three years painting this environmental series that I'm sharing with you so that I could share my ideas. And I'm voting for people who I think will fight climate change. So don't let the monsters win. Dreaming of green. Yes, I'm dreaming of green. What a lovely world this would be if we all had green energy and lived on a clean, healthy planet. I won't see it, but I hope that my grandchildren or my great-grandchildren will. Number 27, my last painting, and this was one of the last that I, that I did paint, it's called Blind Itis, again, a word I made up. Subtitle, some don't recognize the danger while others won't acknowledge it. This painting is dedicated to those people who know the truth, but would rather not admit it or act on it. We all see things differently, but we should be able to look at and agree to the same basic facts. How can we get anything done if we don't? If we are to win humanity's most important battle, the battle to save the earth, I believe we must act quickly and decisively. Without a habitable earth, nothing else matters. If you would like to comment or reach me, you can reach me at my Email dancingrider01 at yahoo.com. I want to thank you for listening. If you enjoy this presentation, please encourage your friends to view my work and to listen to my concerns. Again, you can reach me at dancingrider01 at yahoo.com. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>